Hello, and welcome to Asterisk Live. My name is Billy Chia, and I'm excited to have with me today uh, Mike Yoder, who is the CTO of Alice Receptionist. Mike, welcome to the show. How are things going for you today? Great, thank you. Well, I'm uh, excited to talk today about Alice Receptionist, which uh, I thought was something very unique and new when I experienced it. Uh, can you just tell our audience a little bit about what you guys do? Yeah, so Alice is a new technology where we're uh, basically automating uh, the receptionist role within buildings and lobbies. So it's a virtual receptionist. And essentially, we have uh, developed um, a software that runs on either a kiosk or a wall-mounted touchscreen uh, device uh, that greets visitors as they walk into the building with a pre-recorded video or a live person on the screen. Um, and it also allows the visitor to touch uh, the name of the person on the screen that they want to talk and connect directly with that employee by uh, a two-way video or audio only if they choose. Um, and that employee can be located in the building or across the country, doesn't really matter where they're located. So essentially when you, you walk in, you see the kiosk and it's got a, a video of a, a receptionist sitting there rather than an actual person. Uh, I'm just kind of curious, uh, how, how often do you see companies using, um, say, like the pre-programmed video versus, say, having a live receptionist on the video? Yeah, and, and typically the way our customers use it is we, the, uh, we use motion detection in the cameras on the device. So when somebody walks into that area where the kiosk is, it actually uh, responds to that. And uh, the pre-recorded video actually greets the visitor, welcomes them to the building, and instructs them to use the touch screen to contact the person they want. So most of our customers use that, that greeting. Uh, we do have a couple that want a full service experience for visitors when they walk in. And in that case, what happens is the motion detection actually contacts a live person immediately when it sees somebody walking into the area. So the live person, um, then uh, the employee, uh, hits a button, and then they pop up on the screen uh, in the lobby area, and they greet the visitor as they walk in. So customers can choose either interaction that works best for them. Uh, most of them go with the, the pre-recorded video and then allow the visitor to contact the person they want to talk with. Yeah, that was something when I, uh, you know, I had seen on your website the the way the kiosk works and, and your hardware, uh, but when I actually walked in and experienced the Alice Receptionist, that was something that I was I was very impressed with that pre-recorded video of the, um, you know, the kind of movement and, and engagement that it kind of gave you is kind of welcome you into the lobby there. Uh, I'm kind of curious, uh, in terms of um, uptake or deployments, um, what kinds of uh, numbers or metrics could you share about um, where you guys are in the process and, and some of the successes you guys have seen? Sure. We're, um, we're still a fairly young company. Uh, we rolled out the product just uh, about two and a half years ago. Um, we have uh, customers now in seven different countries. Um, we've got a couple of uh, government agencies uh, here in the States. We actually have some uh, uh, embassies uh, in Canada and Brazil. Um, and a lot of enterprise companies. So that's really where we're growing into right now is the enterprise and government field, although it works as well for the SMB market. Um, so we've got a, quite a few of those customers as well, but we're really focused on government and, and, uh, and enterprise. So we've got, I think, currently over 100 uh, corporate accounts, and uh, I don't know the number of end users, but it's in the thousands range now. Okay, and what do you... What do you see as in that in that uh, larger enterprise corporate space, or like you were saying, government? What types of features of the Alice receptionist are particularly attractive to that market? So what's really neat is we just rolled out our latest version, 3.7, and that's focused on that market. And so we incorporated some things that they had been asking for, including uh, integration with Active Directory, so that we can actually pull a list of their users directly from Active Directory. Um, we also uh, integrated a, a Microsoft Link connection so we can talk to Link systems if that's what they're using for unified communications. But all the benefits uh, that come with the Asterisk phone system are also key to what our customers are looking for. So um, we built that into sort of the, the way the whole system works. So we have call groups, uh, follow me forward, all the typical PBX um, features that you would expect are things that our customers are, are looking for. Okay, and so is Alice a product that if I have an Astrospace phone system, I can integrate it with Alice, or when I purchase Alice, it also comes with an Astrospace phone system? So we actually use Astric um, as our engine. So that's what we use to 
when you uh, make a call from the Alice kiosk, that's calling out to an Asterisk server. Uh, typically, it's our cloud server. Um, and that then routes the call to an endpoint, which could be uh, one of our soft clients that we've got installed on our customers' uh, PCs, or it could be um, a phone number or you know any any SIP enabled endpoint. Um, so we're using Asterisk sort of as the engine for all that communications. Uh, we can also, if a customer has a PBX on site, rather than using our cloud PBX, we can definitely tie it directly into their PBX. Um, so they can use their existing PBX as well to route all that communications through there. Okay, so it sounds like there's a lot of options. I can, uh, when somebody's in the lobby and they say, I want to talk to, you know, they come in, they say, I want to talk to Mike, and they maybe they click on your name on the panel there, then that can route to a uh, hard phone on your desk, that could route to a web client, that's the Alice web client that I'm using in my browser, or possibly tie in with Microsoft Link or some other type of PBX system. Yeah, we've essentially made it so the customer can communicate however they want, um, whether that's just a regular phone line over the PTSN or if it's it's a web client. We're doing everything through SIP, so I mean the, the purpose we did that was so that we could communicate with other devices. That was the whole goal there, um, and we've accomplished that fairly well. So yeah, we haven't... Uh, pretty much any customer environment we can work with, either existing infrastructure or we can host it all for them if they choose to do that. Okay. And maybe for some of our uh, more technical viewers or other Asterisk integrators, as you guys were developing Alice or um, you know using Asterisk as that uh, core engine there, do you have any types of uh, advice, architecture or technical advice in terms of working with Asterisk? You know, Asterisk is uh, obviously a key part of our technology, uh, how we've implemented our solution. Um, I'm not necessarily the uh, Asterisk <laughs> engineer, so uh, it, it's definitely a big part of what we've done. I mean, we focused on, you know, uh, utilizing uh, a lot of the, uh, the, like I said, the follow me, the group calling, um, a lot of the features that we build into the application, any time we could see an opportunity to use what's already built into the Asterisk PBX, we, we made the decision to not try to recreate those features within our software, but instead to utilize the features within Asterix. So uh, if we, you know, like say, have a call group, uh, some of our customers, when someone walks in, instead of it just calling a single receptionist, they want it to ring four or five different people who the first person that picks it up um, will take that call. And so that's, you know, it's as simple as creating that call group within um, Asterix, and then uh, it can handle that. Uh, right out of the box, so we don't have to build those type of functionality uh, into our software. Uh, and so we've taken every opportunity to really utilize those features within the Asterisk PBX when we could. Okay, very nice. So as, a, as an engine, you're able to use that open source software to bootstrap the development and take advantage of some of the built-in features to enable features in your product. Exactly. We didn't want to rebuild all the functionalities of a PBX within our software we, when we could just tie it in directly to what we're, we have available to us. Okay. Well, very nice. For uh, those customers or users that are interested in, in learning more about Alice, uh, where should they go or how can they get involved with it? Yep, so uh, the website is alicereceptionist.com um, and we have all of our information on there. Uh, we'll be attending the uh, Vartech and uh, one shows uh, in September for Blue Star and Ingram Micro, so we'll have a booth there with the uh, ELO Touch Solutions uh, group, and uh, if they're a reseller at those shows, uh, drop by the booth. We'll definitely be happy to do a demonstration. Okay. Well, excellent. Well, Mike, thanks uh, for talking to us today, and uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Thank you.